morning, sir. I was just off to do an errand. Say, you don't happen to know anything about motor cars, do you? Yes, I do. Hastings, what is this you make me say? I know nothing of motor cars. I do, Poirot. Let's see what he's on about. What would you like to know? Major Barry's car needs its points cleaned. He wants it as soon as possible. But I have to test the motor on the sea tractor. It's been a bit dodgy lately. I wouldn't want to strand anyone on the island. I'd be in your debt if you could help me out. The young scoundrel asks such a thing of the world's greatest detective? Hang on, Poirot. It wouldn't hurt to have a bright lad like Jenks on our side. I see no points on the car of Major Barry. And the motor cars, they are filthy. Nonsense. You'd think you'd never heard of soap. I've never cleaned points myself, but all we need are some instructions. The current issue of Motor Enthusiast magazine has an exceptionally clear article on the subject. Something pricked me. It's a sliver of metal. Must be magnetic. Can't say I see much point in hanging on to a magnetic sliver of metal. But you never know. As you say, Hastings, You'll never know. Well, that is not going to help. That is not... It is not... It appears to be... It appears to be stuck that way. It appears to be stuck that way. This is neither their time nor their place. I confess that your logic, it is... Your instincts are well honed, mon ami.
I do not think that. Does nothing strike you as odd about what you are doing? You presume that this would be the choice of Poirot? I think not. Does nothing you presume? No, it is not possible. Puzzle, it is one piece closer to completion. I confess, no, it is. It appears to be stuck that way. It appears. Without error, mon ami. Done, old man. There is not enough soap in all of Devon to restore my hands. Morning, sir. Got the tractor motor purring like a kitten. Any luck with Major Barry's automobile? Why, yes. Against all expectation, I have cleaned the tips with much success. Beg your pardon? Points, old man. And the points as well. Smashing. Much obliged, sir. Like a ride to the island? Yes, please. Let's be off then. I expect you've heard about our ghost, the smuggler Tom Cutter. He used to bring in his goods to the cove on Sea Drift Island, they now call Cutter's Cove. And he was regular at the pub on the island. That's where he met his end, they say, hung by agents of the Crown. There'll be those who say he was shot or drowned. But my old gaffer knew the story, and he swore they strung old Tom up from the hotel side. Beach is certainly empty this morning. I believe Captain Marshall will be swimming shortly. Everyone else off on excursions, I expect. Major Barry wanted to go into Knightsbridge if his car was fixed. The Major? He has business in Kingsbridge? Oh, he was complaining of the lack of privacy when using the phone in Leathercombe Bay. Post office. I can't imagine what he has to be so secretive about. Can you? Oakley. No, darling. You do not take the excursion? I was saying to Mr. Gardner only this morning, we simply must make an excursion to Dartmoor. It's quite near and the associations are all so romantic, aren't they, Oakley? Yes, darling. I've always wanted to visit the Dartmoor prison. You do not knit at the ledges this morning? No, Miss Darnley was there before us and didn't seem to be in the mood for chatting. So we came here. Didn't want to disturb her, did we, Oakley? No, darling. The motor car, it is repaired. Oh? Isn't that splendid, Oakley? Yes, darling. Oakley, I don't believe I've got that second shade of purple wool. It's in the second drawer of the bureau in our bedroom, or it might be the third. Yes, darling. Good morning, Mr. Redfern. I don't see anything good about it. 
goodness, he's in a mood. I confess that your logic, it escapes me. The good detective knows, even... What have we here, Hastings? Mademoiselle Brewster, you have had a pleasant morning? Good morning, Mr. Poirot. Well, I was, until somebody chucked something at me from the balcony up there. Mademoiselle, I have looked into Millie's murder. And? I believe I have found the one responsible for her death. Who was it? Colonel Weston is having his men follow up on certain facts I placed before him. While I cannot tell you with absolute certainty, Nevertheless, the indications are very strong that the one they will question is our man. Every instinct tells me he is the man, and I promise you, he will be brought to justice. Mr. Poirot, I can't tell you how much this means to me. She was a good friend to you, young Mary. Yes, yes she was. She was an innocent. Mr. Poirot, I can't bear it when the innocent suffer. You have the good heart, mademoiselle. I am happy I was able to assist you. Something was thrown at you? I was having my usual morning swim at about half past ten, when all of a sudden, whoosh, something hit the water very near my head. You do not know what it was, the projectile? No, I would have swum down for it, but the water's pretty deep here, and my ears won't take the pressure. If you'll excuse me, it's time for my row. The exercise will do me good. There is no... There is no need to disturb Mademoiselle Darnley. Let her enjoy her book. Let her enjoy their sunshine hastings. Madame Redfern. Oh, Monsieur Poirot, I have the sketch you asked me for. Merci, madame. <laughs> 